Hello girls, hello boys, hello joys. It is I, Yasmin, also known as Glitter Blossom. Oh, and do I have a deck for you today? This is the winning deck of the latest Etherhub community tournament on Arena, and it is Izet Flash. Not the first list of its kind, of course, but running a novelty in Embercleave. It's kind of part of the soft top end with Gadwick, of course, a good boy, where the hard top end is just a three of Ral's Outburst, and the rest is three drops and lower. Uh, we're just kind of trying to mimic the mono blue tempo game plan of old, but with, well, more controlly elements, sort of, uh, more kind of, you know, stronger damage outlets as well um yeah pretty standard in the main for cutthroat for borrower for bone crusher giant for ionize as well and for opt and then i've never really found like i'm still so kind of new to deck building and ratios i just net deck and try to improve my technical play at this point because deck building is a whole other beast so like i'm not sure what the thought process is behind two shock to negate two quench specifically like i could not tell you for the life of me why there aren't three quenches and one negate or like three shocks one negate three quenches for instance etc etc but uh in the sideboard we do have one more negate to Add out our sweets if we need to. Three lava coils for things that are bigger and harder to kill. Three sorcerer spy glasses for mostly things like oven, but also of course they work versus other planeswalkers, Nissa especially. Um, although Teferi's probably seeing more play at this point because Jeskai Fires is amazing. Dispute to hit all the decks playing blue. Flame sweep to kill off the weenies and Chandra. Awakened Inferno because she's honestly good in a lot of different matches. Like she's good versus weenies and she's good versus more controlly games. Of course she's not good versus all weenies. Um Knights can get pretty big and they're really fast. You're not really thinking that you're guaranteed to make it to a turn six. At least that's what I'm assuming. Um again, sideboarding is another quality of mine that I need to improve. Uh, yeah, another thing is that we're only running two Fabled Passage and one Blast Zone, which is very interesting. Blast Zone is very good versus Oven, of course. Um, and two Castle Ventress, just because Scrying is good. Let's us do things even when we can't do things, so that we can begin doing things more quickly. Uh, so that was a bit of a lengthy and sort of winding explanation, but yes, we are going to try this out on the standard ladder would like to make it back uh, into plat so i can more seriously grind this month i have a dream of making the mcq through arena but like you know someone who doesn't know how to deck build and barely knows how to sideboard probably not going to be making it anytime soon but i'm gonna try my hardest well not my absolute hardest, because I want to maintain, you know, having a life, but, uh, my hardest within reason. Alright, uh, our deck appears not to be trying its hardest, so we're going to mull that wondrous hand. And we're going to land on this one. Now, this hand is not great. We do have Quench to stop some early threats, but versus Aggro, it's probably not going to be enough. We want our Scryland, of course. Probably want our... We'll probably just put the Fabled Passage away because we have access to our colors in every capacity that we will need them in the early game. All right, so next turn we get to hold up either a Quench or a Bone Crusher Giant. I think I'm going to keep this Ionize on top because at this point, I'm not really super sad if I get stuck on three mana for one turn. This deck's not likely to get stuck on mana though because it runs, if I recall correctly, 26 lands. However, uh, having said that, I mean, I did open a hand of seven creatures, or seven non-lands, that is. So, you know. All right, so we'll keep up Ionize for this. Um, 
Obviously, it appears we are playing versus blue-white control. And versus that sort of deck, we uh, want to have our counters up as much as we can. Now, I'm not sure if it's proper to stomp. Because we want to do them damage ASAP. And we don't really have anything else to do. I'm going to try to stomp. Uh, they might just be waiting to chemisters during my end step. Because blue-white control is running chemisters now. Because it's one of the few decks that's running stickier to fairies. Like um, Jeskai control or Jeskai inventions to fairies. Not actually that sticky. So, I am... Hmm, is it important for me to have Ral's Outburst up? I don't think it is, because the only thing I would really need to hit with Ral's Outburst would be a Teferi, and obviously I wouldn't be able to do that during their turn. And I was just about to say, if they have a Brazen Borrower, that is not really something I want to be hitting with a Ral's Outburst. At least, not... Yet, I don't think. I want to be countering whatever they're going to play this turn. But if they don't play anything, then we feel kind of silly. Well, uh, now what we're going to do is play that mountain. So now we can scry if they do nothing this turn. Or we can just get rid of the Brazen Borrower. I think I'm going to get rid of the Brazen Borrower, honestly. We obviously don't have a Dispute up, but they might think we're maining Dispute. They'll probably try to counter this anyway. Well, they might try to counter. I'm not sure, actually. It depends on whether the Borrower is their only threat. It's not, like, super valuable, but countering it with a Dispute is a very small investment for them, so that makes sense. All right. So, we're going to be taking some damage here, but uh, we're going to go off the counter plan for a while. They don't appear have anything at instant speed. Arena betrays that, which is good for us. Our life total is getting pretty low, but that's honestly okay. At this point, we're at six mana, so we will be able to cutthroat into Ral's Outburst. Of course, this will end up being kind of sad if they have Teferi or counter spells. but uh, yeah, we'll find out. Uh, it's kind of greedy. It's pretty greedy. But, like, if it baits out a counterspell from them, that's pretty good for us. Let's find out. They don't yet have their Castle Arden Veil, which makes me happy. Now, unfortunately, I kind of need to do this right now. If nothing else, I can just Gadwick and hope they play a spell and then Ionize, but they probably wouldn't be playing a spell during their main phase. Okay, uh, so that happened. So, we're going to attack, obviously, because we gotta, and then we're going to play Gadwick. Uh, we are going to play him for zero, because we're not trying to gamble on drawing a land. Uh, yeah, we're going to absorb that, and... Hmm... We have one more turn. But it's not looking good for us. Oh, shit. If we... Oh, fuck. If we had ionized their absorb, we would have killed them next turn. Well, guess not. Okay. Uh, they are spending their mana on this. Hopefully they don't have a mystical dispute. They appear not to. Very good. And that's the game. Oof. Okay. Well, uh, we ended up getting lucky here. Uh, definitely ionizing earlier probably the play, I think. I don't know. Like, we know the deck runs time wipe, but I'm not entirely sure if we needed to. Like, like I didn't think of it, and of course, that was my problem. But, yeah. Do we take Flame Sweep for, like, Castle Ardenvale, or is that too, too gimmicky? Not sure. Uh, what am I siding out here? Bench, maybe? Punch is really good for taxing their mana, but we do have Mystical Dispute. We probably don't need, like, a billion counter spells. I'm going to take out Rails Outburst. Embercleave is nice, but, um... Maybe I'll take out one Embercleave, because, like... And then just save two Opts, because it's kind of easy to shape. Like, 
Emrakleave is so expensive. In this deck, we really don't want to be casting spells on our turn. So there is an argument to be made for just cutting both the Embercleaves, but uh, we'll see how this works. Okay, so this is a pretty good start for us. We are very happy with this. We're going to keep the Vantress on top because the Vantress gives us enormous advantages later on. Hopefully they play a Teferi here so that we can counter it. Okay, they are not playing a Teferi. So I wonder if the play here is to start bashing in with the Brazen Borrower, and I think it is. All right, they appear not to have any white mana. This is almost 100% going to get countered. If it's not going to get countered, then I have no idea why they kept the hand that they have. But uh, yeah, probably. Or it might just get petty thefted, which also makes a ton of sense. And so uh, we are doing it during our end phase. So whatever. Uh, they're not going to be able to cast their own Brazen Borrower. So that's good news for us. Now... We're going to try to see what we do here. We have a lot of options open, of course. We have, like, Stomp and Negate. We have Borrower and Op. We have Petty Theft and either of these two spells as well. We are going to go for the Negate. However, they probably have the Dispute. But, oh, they don't have the Dispute. Okay. Well, this is looking pretty good for us then, friends. I mean, they might have had the Quench or something, although I don't think Izzet's playing Quench. Not entirely sure. We're going to go a bit greedy here, try to pressure them, because we know they don't have counter spells open. See what happens. They have finally found their white mana, unfortunately, but that's kind of fine. Are they going to Petty Theft us? Ooh, I will... Hmm... I like him, but I think we want more lands. I'm fine with this being a removal spell. This basically was three mana, your opponent discards a card and takes two damage. N not amazing, but pretty okay for a tempo-y plan. Uh, do I... Do I use my full mana here, or do I wait to kill their borrower? I think we're I think we have to try to kill them faster than they kill us because their long game is better than ours in a lot of respects, especially if they find Castle Vantress or uh, Castle Ardenvale, that is. Did I say Vantress earlier when I was siding? I think I did. So we want a land. We really hate missing our land drops, but uh kinda sucks if we main phase it and don't get a land. I think we're fine here because worst comes to worst, we will be able to spry for a land. If they don't do anything too scary, I think that might be what I do. Like, if they're not casting another Teferi or something, if they're casting a Teferi, then obviously we have to ionize and hope that that works. And if they, like, counter it somehow, then okay. All right. I think the play... Hmm. Is it? Is it to scry? We have so much we want to do, but we really need lands. Yeah, we really need to make sure we got lands. Okay, so this kind of sucks. Um, I want both of these. Okay, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to put the dispute on top so that I draw it so that I can opt into the Fabled Passage. And... Then we'll get ourselves another island. Uh, I didn't need to specifically do it in that order, but uh, yeah. So, this is unfortunate. We're not really having a great time of it. Our life total is just under theirs, or about to be just under theirs, that is. But, uh, yeah, okay. So, with that in mind, let's see... They do. Are you gonna counter? I mean, they can't dispute my petty theft. Okay. Um. Hmm. This really sucks because we can't dispute and ionize. 
So I think we have to let it go. And if they have another dispute, then our life kind of sucks, but they appear not to. All right. So it's pretty smooth sailing from here, I think. Um, that's very cocky of me to say, but uh, we've got a bunch of land. We've got Ionize and Mystical Dispute up. So really, we're golden. I think we use Dispute before Ionize in case they use a Dispute of their own and we can just pay three. Uh, we don't want to use the more mana intensive version, which is kind of different from usual where you want to use the things that cost more mana earlier. But uh, yeah, okay. Um, hmm. Yeah, let's do this because we don't have many other things to cast really. So keeping an eye and eyes in hand seems pretty okay. All right. They could have negated that. I feel like they maybe wanted to negate that, but uh, we'll see. So here with Gadwick, we are in a very good position. We can cast Gadwick. So if we cast Gadwick for zero, we have five mana open, which is not great for us. Like, it's not really going to do much. I'm going to cast Gadwick for X equals one in case we draw a Mystical Dispute. Is that silly? Like, we're not going to be able to cast Gadwick in a way that lets us cast both I and I that lets us cast I and I's and keep mana open if they play a mystical dispute. Casting Gadwick for two though would feel I mean, we can like try to draw wait, did we did we play this land this turn? Yeah, we played it this turn. So we can't draw into land and mystical dispute. Um I'm gonna I'm gonna get greedy. Why not? Let's see what they got. They could mystical dispute that if they had it, but uh yeah. Alright, this is looking pretty good. So no matter what happens here, we will be getting Chandra down next turn, and from there it will one hundred percent be smooth sailing. Okay, uh there was no Wow, that was bad of me. Um I mean, no, no. Casting the Brazen Borrower here is really stupid. Uh, they have to wipe our board now, like, if they... <laughs> Interesting. Okay. I'm gonna leave that as is. Uh, see what they're planning to do here. We'll put you on top. And, uh, yeah. Oh, okay. I respect that. Kind of oh, going out a bit more on your own terms. Yeah, that is very respectable. Okay, so we played our first match versus control, which is always stressful, but um, less stressful than Cat Oven in a lot of ways. Uh, I really want the Bitter Blossom card sleeve, of course, because... Glitter Blossom, but uh, geez, these cost way more than my broke ass is able to afford, and I don't know, like, also, you know, I live in, in Canada, so shipping uh, would cost a shit ton from what I'm hearing, and uh, a bunch of other shit, like, it's just a lot of money for a giant box with, like, Two or three cards in it, you know. Not really, not really amazing. Okay. So we're not going to cast the opt because we want to save the opt for. Ooh, we're playing versus fires. Okay. All right. Let's hope they don't have a bone crusher on two. That would be unfortunate. We do get to play the Quench, though, hopefully on their Fires, or on their Teferi, honestly. Either works. But obviously starting with a Scry is very nice for them. Things of Foresight unironically seeing play is so funny to me. Like, nobody really expected that card to do anything, did they? I certainly didn't, and I was under the impression that nobody did. But, uh, yeah, okay. So... 
We now have mana for the Gadwick we need to use him. But yeah. Next turn. Oh, are they just gonna stomp? Hmm. This really sucks. Because I think I, I think I want to quench this so that they don't have the Bone Crusher Giant. But uh if they play Teferi this turn gonna be very sad oh god please no oh fuck oh shit oh this really sucks oh god oh god oh god oh god oh god should i have opted there i'm not sure i am entirely unsure uh obviously we don't want to bounce the teferi if they have a kill spell for the cutthroat, that sucks. Alright, so this is actually optimal for us. We get to bounce this, axing their mana a little. Unfortunately, we will not be able to both opt for a land and draw or end keep ionize open, but we will be able to kill their Teferi, which steamrolls our deck. So yeah. It would be really nice to have that negate right now, but what are you going to do? How do we out a Sphinx of Foresight? That's what I want to know. Oof. Okay, well, at least they scryed to the bottom rather than to the top. All right. Um, Do I need this negate? I don't think so, actually. Uh, Really sad. Not really some... Not really great planning on my part, but uh, yeah. Hmm, I don't like this. I don't like this at all. Oh. Okay, okay. So, we'll play Gadwick for no value, I think. Will we? Will we? Uh, I think we will. We'll play Gadwick for no value. And this way we'll be able to tap their sphinx if they for instance like go for a cav of flame etc etc but uh make no mistake we are in quite a bad position here <laughs> like unless they have absolutely nothing our life kind of sucks uh, we really don't like this oh no i i assume this means they're maining mystical disputes oh fuck oh shit oh Okay. <laughs> okay. Now we are in an amazing position. Holy shit. Okay. So now we can use our Brazen Borrower to tap their Sphinx. Should we need to? Honestly, we will wait. We will let them attack with a Sphinx if they, for some reason, want to. But I doubt they do. Uh. Interesting. That's only two damage. What are they going to do next? Are they going to Clarion? I swear to Christ. Oh, God. Oh, fuck. Come on. Don't be like that. Okay. Uh. Hmm. Um. What do I do here? Is there a way to still kill them next turn? There's no way to save this because we would need to boost it by four that's not happening so oh god they're going to attack though they're gonna have lifelink oh shit well no we can shock it yeah okay shock this and hope they don't have anything else in hand honestly uh we are going to scry on upkeep oh we were too late okay well that sucks uh we do have another flash creature though unfortunately it is a ground creature but uh yeah we're going to can we do both do we have seven mana right now we do have seven mana okay so we are able to both play our cutthroat and scry we are going to scry first however just in case we draw like a shocker oh there it is Perfection. Okay, we'll just play you now. And... 
Boom. Good game. Okay. <sighs> this deck's performing pretty well. I mean, I've played different variants of this deck already just because I've seen other lists floating around, but uh, I'm quite happy with this one. Okay, so we're playing the Negates again, of course, and the Chandras and the Disputes. Are we playing the Spyglass for Av and Kenrith? That feels really iffy. Like, it doesn't stop Teferi's passive either, so that just feels entirely off-base for us, unfortunately. Like, I would love to be able to do that, but I don't think it's what we want. Um, Ember Cleave might actually be really nice versus them, because they can't play it in speed, but it does kind of suck versus Teferi again, so I'm going to cut it to one. I don't know. Um, again, they have, like infinite mana so quench actually sucks versus them so that makes that cut pretty easy like it's a nice early game counterspell but we have a bajillion negates and mystical disputes and we have three i and i still so we should be entirely fine okay this is a pretty good hand versus fires <laughs> i think like oh god of course of course that sucks okay uh one on the top, which is sad for us. All right, we can stop drawing non-creature counter spells. Actually, I think that I, I think we're good. So, do I play the cutthroat on two? I think I kind of have to. An extended game versus them is really bad for us. Now, if they have a uh, Bone Crusher Giant, then that sucks for us, but they appear not to, which is perfect. Okay, so they are going to be playing their Sphinx of Foresight most likely. Ooh, easy money. And next turn, we have two two mana spells up. Oh, God, we're just going to play the big tempo game here. I got... They're usable no matter what, also, so that's cool. Like, we have the negate here, and we have the stomp. Oh my god. Life is good. <laughs> Are they gonna concede? I mean... Okay, this is perfect. Alright, more mana, more mana. So now we can cast the borrower and the negate, and that should clear out the... Or just, you know, the... Oh, no thank you, friend. Yeah, that's... That's the game. Oh, God. Wow. Straight up God hand versus control. Holy shit. <laughs> I am so sorry, friend. I mean, I'm not really. I'm a fucking troll-loving sadist. But, uh, wow. These games are going by much faster than I expected. Like, obviously, you know, Flash. Flash's whole thing is trying to close out games really quickly, but still, sometimes you play longer, kind of grindier matches. The uh, like, that's what Gadwick is sort of useful for sometimes. Although he's just nice as a three mana three three that taps things whenever you play a blue spell that can also like you know draw cards on ETB if you want to. Like he's just he's so good. Oh, what an amazing boy. All right. I keep forgetting to enter my Fibblethip code. <laughs> Ooh, this is like a regrettable hand. Like, we can try to make it work, but it feels really iffy. We have early interaction. We have a lot of early interaction. So I'm going to keep it because there's no guarantee that a mull would give us anything better and we would be starting with fewer cards. I'm just I'm just saying obvious shit here. <sighs> Our opponent seems unsure what they want to do, even though Once Upon a Time is no longer in the format. Thank fuck for that, by the way. Jeez. I can't wait until Oko, Once, Veil, and Field are banned from Historic. I mean, I really hope they are. I also hope Nexus is banned, but... uh. 
yeah, I just hate Nexus. I'm gonna... Hmm. We want lands, but I think we want more tempo than this. We want to get to four lands and have this be untapped. Then again, we could have kept that because... Okay, it looks like we are probably playing versus is at tempo ourselves. So that's cool. Uh, I'm not actually sure how to deal... Oh! Okay, so they didn't have a cutthroat. That's fine. Uh, it's like possible that we're playing versus Teamer Reclamation, but I don't think Teamer, Re Teamer Reclamation wants to be playing temples, or if they do, they would probably want to be playing uh, Temple of Mystery. The, you know, enable growth spirals more easily, etc, cetera, etc. Cetera. Earlier game. But, yeah. Are they just going to bone crush it? Uh, stomp? Okay. Shock works, too. That is a card that works. Hmm. Since our land is not going to be tapped this coming turn, if we don't draw another one. The Brineborn Cutthroat? They definitely seem to have options here. Okay. Um, using life versus them seems like a bad idea. We probably aim to slow down the game and keep control of it. Oh god. Wonder what this game is like in the mirror. Do I? Do I play this? I don't think I do. Yeah, we're not trying to kill them. We are trying to slow down the game right now, or uh, keep control of the game and have as many resources as possible. The person who makes the first move is at the greater disadvantage generally, unless of course they have counters already. Oh, if they get like, if they get a cutthroat, that really sucks for us. Um, because they'll probably have some sort of counter up. They kept whatever was on top there. So that's not great. Our ops are filling their role. Okay, so we will be able to stomp this. That should be fine for us. Because they won't be able to pump its toughness over a stomp. And they won't be able to counter us. Because... Stomp is not a blue spell. I was thinking maybe they had Unsummon, but Unsummon feels really iffy, especially in the main board, this format. Like, yeah, maybe in Mono Blue Tempo you would want Unsummon, but you don't want to be playing Mono Blue Tempo at this point, honestly. Just not a good time. Okay, so do I want five mana up? I think I probably do, so that I can... You know, possibly Petty Theft and Borrower, or even just Stomp and Borrower, like, the thing. Hmm, okay. We are going to try to feel the threat, actually. I know I said the person who moves first makes themselves most vulnerable, but we're going to do what we can. They're most likely not maining Mystical Dispute in this climate, but, uh, like, I wouldn't be surprised if they were, because, like, Jeskai Fires is amazing, but, like, food is often now Golgari or even Jund. Okay. All right. Um, well, we're not going to hit their face with a stomp, so might as well do this. Okay. Alright, this gives us better options. We have cutthroats into stomp, however, it is probably a better idea for us to save our cutthroat for when we have ionize up. I think that's the play. Hmm... Yeah. We'll take the damage. That's okay. 
And we play this. What they've got. We kind of, like, we need to get rid of their Brineborn Cutthroat is a thing. Petty Thefting really sucks. Uh, we're not able to play two spells. We are able to Ionize, but that's really risky. I'm going to do it. See what happens. Play Mystical Dispute. This game is probably just going to run away from us, but we'll see. We shall see. We can get Ember Cleave onto a Cutthroat, that would be nice, but I feel like Ember Cleave seems to be quite bad in control matchups and quite bad versus like versus the mirror because they can just petty theft or you know respond at instant speed, either counter it because it's a really expensive spell that you usually want to be activating or casting on your turn. So okay, alright, this really sucks. Oh, okay. Um, I'm going to stomp this now. They don't have an answer. And then I'm going to cast a Bone Crusher Giant because we don't have an answer. They might have to play around the Mystical Dispute, but that shouldn't be too difficult for them. They probably just don't want to do anything on their turn anyway. Like, they might see that we have nothing open, or that we have only one mana open, and think, all right, this is perfect. We can do something about this giant if he doesn't have a... Ooh, what is this? Playing fire. Good tech. Good tech. Okay. Um, We're going to play our other one, honestly. See what happens. If they quench, then uh, we probably would pay the two, honestly. The, this gives us room to uh, just borrower or to, you know, use either of these. Should be nice. Should be fine. Oh, <sighs> we just got to... We just got to make sure we keep our resources. Of course, adventures are amazing for that, but... Oh, uh, I really wish I had a counterspell there, but this seems like they were baiting out a counterspell, honestly. So, because, like, going face with their giant is kind of inconsequential, but, like, of course it is possible that uh, they just wanted to do this to get the value before making a blocker, which is valid. That is valid. I'm going to cast this now, because I can. See if they counter it. If they do, then I will be able to Ember Cleave pretty safely. Like, actually completely safely if they counter this, even with a Mystical Dispute. So that's nice. Ember Cleave on Giant versus their Giant is great. They seem to be considering it, and in the end they decide against it. They might just Petty Theft, but that's, okay, that's not great for them. Alright, so we're going to attack. And see what happens. Will they block? And do we have game if they don't? We do not have game. Because we will be... Even if we put the Ember Cleave on the Bone Crusher Giant, we will be doing 10 damage with it and 3 damage with the Brazen Borrower. Um... I think I have to save it. Yeah, like they're taking still seven damage. That is a considerable amount of damage to be taken. Eat. All right, so. Of course, it would be nice to uh, stomp, but they won't kill us even if they have an Ember Cleave of their own unless even if they stomp us here, they won't, unless they, like, have another stomp or, like, a Rouse... No, they won't be able to Ember Cleave and Rouse Outburst. And they won't be able to field another... Like, if it's a Brineborn Cutthroat, we just stomp it here. And our life is good. Okay. That is pretty good for me, I think. 
Um, yeah, yeah, they realize that they're just way too low on life at this point. I think? Like, they knew we could just, uh, oh! Oh, it appears our opponent just doesn't want to play these kinds of matches. I mean, I understand people not liking these kinds of matchups, because of course people have different preferences, and as I found, it is very, uh, it's a very common view to just not like control matchups like control or tempo mirrors etc etc but i for one <laughs> live for them and i'm really glad that i got to show y'all three different control yeah three different control mirrors or not mirrors three different control matchups in this video uh jeskai is jeskai control really like it's sort of strangey, I guess? It's like, Or like control with a big... You wouldn't call it a combo finish, but I don't know what it is. It's, 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 it's control with an explosive finish, I guess? Because like it plays counter spells, it plays removal, it plays the fairy. So I guess control more than mid-range, really. Like it definitely has the mid-range elements. Whatever. Y'all can tell me what you think about that. Anyway... Uh, this was really fun. Honestly, one of the most fun, uh, one of the videos that I've had the most fun recording. So thank you all so much for joining me today. Please leave a like if you enjoyed the video. Share this video with others if you think, you know, it's worth that. Subscribe if you want to see more content. We're probably going to be playing some more standard uh, this week. Um just you know uh in prep for uh or in the spirits of the mc not in prep for the mc your girl is not good enough for that not even good enough to go to the mcq yet but um anyway as always i have to force myself to stop rambling so uh bye